block it. Feels bad, man. Anyway, looks like we're going to be changing this up. I am fine with swapping to Soldier 76 here. Uh, Hanzo versus Farah. The burst damage can sometimes catch Farah out, but Farah can honestly... Farah wins that matchup, assuming the two are equal. Assuming the two are equivalent, Farah's just doing more. You know, it's coaching the many uh, Hanzo and Soldier now. What is our job here at Soldier 76? Let's talk about... Um, Look like Lucio knocked the Rhine off. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. The point is that Reinhardt should have pulled back, not gone forward at the end. Like, that's the big thing. Reinhardt should not have, con have gone in. Um, but now it's like, we're moving on to Soldier 76 territory. This is what I get for not watching all the way to the end. But what is our job of Soldier 76 here? Our job, okay? Step one, damage onto... Well, step one is keep the Farah back. We want to make Farah's life a living hell. Farah is our number one priority. No one else can deal with it as well as we can. Anna sort of can, but if Anna's busy, which she often is, then she can't be dealing with the Farah. We want to be the main source of pressure on that. Step two, get rid of the enemy Reinhardt barrier. Step three, do burst damage, kill anything vulnerable. That's what we're, that's our three goals. And also, put down a good biotic field just to keep the tanks alive that little bit more, provide a bit of extra healing. Okay, we're feeling good though. We're still 2-1, plenty of time, plenty of ways to make it up. Sprinting out, a little bit risky, but hey, Farah has actually done a really stupid thing in that she's just jumped out into the middle of the map. We got a May for some reason. Why we have a May, I don't know, and then half the team is moving to the point. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's all going wrong. Oh my God, what the frig happened there? Okay. What happened here is the team had no plan. So we have a May. The plan, if we have a May, the May has a very good idea of what the plan is. No one else has this idea because the May's come out of nowhere. The plan is we run towards the courtyard, bait them out, wall them off, and then run to the point and maybe try and catch a few people on the point. Or we just move straight to the point and try and wall them from getting onto the point. I'd be perfectly fine with that. The problem with that is. No one else was on board with the plan. If we all ran to the point with the May, got a wall up and cut off the enemy team, we would have been fine. But the plan was more, let's bring out the Soldier 76 pick, let's um, use that little bit of extra pressure, let's use the Roadhog, the triple tank lineup, the very standard lineup, put pressure on the Farah. If Farah can't contribute as much, then we just uh, win, basically. Instead, we end up with this splitting up. Everyone's going in different directions. Their Reinhardt could just freely charge in with a Zarya barrier on him, keep him alive nice and simple, gets a quick pick. Now suddenly Farah's free because we're trying to deal with Reinhardt. Farah could just come over and kill the shit out of us from high ground. I think. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. This is what happens when you don't leave spawn with a plan. And no one just came up with a plan. This is why when leaving spawn... If I'm playing normally, I'll generally try and say, hey, let's go X, let's do X, let's let's do this. That's what I will generally try and go for. Okay, so we're set up, we're set up, we're set up, we're set up. Dealing damage, dealing damage, dealing damage. Okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Shelling Farah, this is what we want to be doing. We're actually in a bit of an awkward position here, but it doesn't matter, no one's noticed us yet. Divas notices us. Be a little bit careful when putting down Biotic Field. I'm not sure if this still happens, but I know it used to in beta, which is Biotic Field is actually a projectile. It's actually a projectile that you fire at the floor. Um, so Genji can deflect it if he stood right on top of you, and D.Va can actually eat a biotic field before it drops. Be very careful when dropping them. We actually win this fight as long as we don't kill ourselves on our own rocket and she's not getting healed. She's getting healed. Why is he? We sprint away. We want to disengage from that. Oh, Anna! What? Oh, oh! There's an opportunity there. I think everything's just going to hell though because we're out of position. And so the rest of our team is just getting pushed on and getting killed. How did this happen? How do we end up in this situation? We've run out here. And we've moved off to this side. I would have liked us just to stay with the team just that little bit more. I mean, the reason why we're ending up over here is we're trying to get a good view on the fire and deal with the fire. But the end result is we just get isolated by this diva. And while this diva is just drilling us down, Farah, Zarya, Reinhardt are all just charging in on our team and killing absolutely everything. Farah's damage is huge, absolutely huge. Cannot be ignored. She comes in, kills absolutely everything with that damage. Now we're just forced to try and sprint our way out. But we're going to die. It's actually okay that we died there. It's not a big problem. Still not keen on this May pick. I don't like May. I do not rate May on King the Hill at all. Now we're throwing the fucking plan out the window. We have picked Genji. So I know a thing or two about Genji. I know a thing or two about Genji, guys, because I've been playing Genji a lot. Uh, so the problem with this is then Farah is now going to dick all over us. We have nothing to deal with the Farah aside from Anna. Why do we have a May? And we have a Zarya. And this, I just want to point out. Let's turn this up. Why do we have a May? He's, it's literally taken half the match to notice that we have a May. <laughs> and honestly, I'm asking the same question. Why do we have a May? May's okay against D.Va, but kind of bad against everything else. 
The problem now is that our team is going to struggle in doing... Oh, that's a really bad, bad ult from that. Oh, don't like that ult at all. Target's already frozen. You don't want to be putting a nano boost on them. Luckily, they get away with it, but oh my lord. Don't do that, ladies and gents. You just pump healing into him and still win that fight. Like, I'm fine with this because the Reinhardt's getting burned down. He's getting caught out a little bit. We get him low. That saves his life, barely, but I think they could have been fine without it. Farah goes down. And we're still losing the fight just because they deal more damage than we do. Because May. Because May, basically. Uh, now we've lost the Roadhog and we've got a McCree. Okay, this, this game is going to hell in a handbasket. Everyone's falling back onto panic picks at the moment. Everyone's panicking. This step... I think all that ne this game needed is someone to calm down and just take a little bit of control and just say, okay, we're doing this. We've got a blizzard out. Everyone's getting nice and low. Good, 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 good. We're dropping dangerously low. I should have come in from behind. I'm guessing the soundberry came out after the blizzard. Ah, uh, same time. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I'm fine with burning down the Ana. That's a very good focus target. We go down. Reinhardt kills us with a fire strike, I think. Misses the Ice Shadow. McCree's busy getting isolated by the Diva because Diva's doing a good job on her job. The enemy team's playing quite well at the moment. They're playing coordinated, playing to their victory conditions. You know, isolate key DPS target, win the rest of the team fight. Alt conservatively let Farah get some space, deal a lot of damage, get some kills. Luckily, we have Nano Boost, I think, and we have Dragon Blade. So we can do a lot with this next fight. Farah versus Genji. Low priority target, and also Farah can just stay over the pit. Luckily, Anna is free enough now to deal some damage. We're in a good position at the moment. Yep, good Dragon Blade, because we just used Soundbarrier. This lets us do some finishing blows. I'm fine with chasing down the Lucio as well, just making Lucio's life hard. Uh, ooh, ooh, bit of a mistake there. The mistake, I'm, I'm pretty sure Mist knows what the mistake here is, well, is as well, which is he actually wanted to eat one of these shots and then go and pick this up immediately. By not picking that up, then Lucio heals up, and Lucio is just a massive pain in the ass. Takes forever to kill unless you get it like a right into his face, get a good right click. So wisely, we just left him back there because we can get to the back to the point faster. We can deal with this faster. Good, 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 good. Lucio tried to run back, got killed on the way in. Absolutely fine. I see a good question in the chat actually from. Let's, let's bring this in. I, by the way, guys, if you have questions about like general stuff, um, ah, save it to the end. Voila. We also have a donation as well. Skyfinder, love your content. I hope to see more keep on going. Thank you so much, Skyfinder, for that. But I want to highlight this question. Anyway, thank you, Skyfinder. Very, very generous of you. Good stuff. Uh, ZZZ8, no, ZZZZ, sorry, 898 asks, why is picking McCree a bad idea? Picking McCree is a bad idea. It's not a bad idea here. It's just that we are losing a lot of tankiness at the moment by taking DPS picks. And the enemy team is in a position where, like, D.Va can just isolate a target and kill it. We have nothing to really stop that. Only Zarya can really deal with that in an effective way. Just losing the Roadhog for a McCree, I think it's just a bad decision. I think uh, Roadhog just does more in this team lineup. Can prevent more. They have similar goals, but Roadhog's just that little bit more effective at his job. That's a free kill. Good lord. Do not do this, ladies and gentlemen. So there, Anna fucks up. This gives you guys a huge opening. Anna, for some reason, on the enemy team... After me complimenting this, followed Zarya out and then just left herself on this nice little plinth. She's just there on a plinth, just like you know, silver platter. Please kill me. Please, please just kill me. There's a Genji on the enemy team. You can get up there and deal with that. There's a bloody enemy Anna as well sniping away. Your Anna wins out because your Anna has a little bit of free space. Gets the kill on the enemy Anna. Now you guys are at a huge advantage. This is where you can just slow down a little bit, take your time. And just work down the enemy barrier or try and work down the enemy fire. I don't know still why we have the May. Good reflect on the fire strike. That's what we want to be looking for. This easy source of ultimate charge. We're almost ready to go in the next ultimate. We're poking, 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 poking. Don't need to do anything overly fancy. We just want to poke, 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 poke. Build up the next dragon blade and win the fight. Blizzard comes down. In the time for them to like panic. This again puts us in a big advantage because we caught most of the team. And now it's just a matter of cleanup. That was perfectly done by their team. Perfectly done by their team. Uh, by this team. Good use of the Blizzard. Their team is already sort of getting fractured. They're already losing the fight. Blizzard is just enough to win. We don't need to use anything more. We know that Anna's going to be coming back very soon. So let's get this Blizzard out. Let's win this team fight now, right before Anna gets back to split the spawns as much as possible. Forces Reinhardt to charge, which means he's going to end up in the middle of nowhere. He should have tried to end his charge here, perhaps, where he could get back into the fight a little bit quicker. But now Reinhardt's just been left in the back. He's not doing anything. He's, he's just ignorable. We can go and deal with this diva in our own free time. Meanwhile, May's cleaned up on the point, and now we can just clean this up. Enemy teams have been completely split in their spawns. Uh, well, actually, no, I know I think managed to get back in the fight and die, but that still bought you guys even more time. Like, you just dragged out a losing team fight for them even longer than 
was thought possible basically like they've just cost themselves a good 30 percent on that timer and now we're in a really good position to actually take this map which we need to do because they're two one up okay now we're in a good position which is waiting 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 oh 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 let's go in there let's get rid of that good charge by him but we can pick it off good grab by them no why didn't i dash first well, miss asked the question i was literally about to ask why the frig did you not dash first and, I don't know, I'm guessing he just panicked. Because we're actually in an okay position here. Like, we're fine. Because it's only the Genji in there. You could have just dashed through them and then just hung back in there and just bought time and space. Like, the enemy team has to be aware that they suddenly could have a nanoblade in their asshole. Oh no, we're in trouble. Someone's come along and has burst our bubble. Yeah, yeah, uh-oh, we're in trouble. May, luckily we have the Queen of Stalls. She's going to buy us enough time maybe on the point. But we really can't actually lose it, so we're actually in a lot of trouble. We're going to have to dash, Dragon Blade, use that dash to get to the point. Okay, first kill, Lucio, good. Let's get to the Ana, good. No. Ana kills us. Feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. Oh, hard times, hard times. Okay, and I think, there we go, after all of that work. Kind of interesting, right? kind of interesting what happened in that game in this entire match there's a few things that went on let's finish out by casting oh god he doesn't even leave it in he doesn't leave it in in the own in his own highlights i was gonna cast the player of the game on sake i imagine i can actually guess what it is i think i know what it is i think i can go and find it um because holy shit it was a pretty glorious moment it was this moment here ladies and gents this moment was really well nice. Really well nice, really well nicely done. I think is what I meant to say, which still doesn't grammatically make sense, but whatever, I'm English, it works. Let's have some coffee. And then let's cast, let's cast this. So here comes Sake, moving on to the point, ladies and gentlemen, gets the scatter arrow there, gets himself a double kill, a triple kill, ladies and gentlemen, for the hands. Oh, he lands one arrow, can he find a quadra kill? No, he can't quite, but he's still landing out all that damage, managing to save the point for his team, Sake. Play the game on Hanzo. There we go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, what did we learn? Let's, let's sum everything up nicely. Things were going pretty well for most of that game. Big flaw I noticed. The big thing I noticed missed, the big mistake I noticed is you get way too eager to just fire out a dragon strike that does nothing or leaves your team in a bad situation. Just hold on to it for that little bit longer. Wait for the enemy team to be engaging and then fire it in. It just kills all of their momentum. Kills anything they're trying to do. Rather than trying to like force them into an engage or rather than trying to force them into doing something or repositioning because they just um, reposition, wait, recoup. And it sort of works when you're playing on this game mode because it's buying time for your team, but then you're losing a big resource. The enemy team knows that you don't have that resource anymore, so they could, they're not scared anymore. Like they, they're going to be scared at this level, especially at Masters and Up, especially when they know that Graviton plus Dragon Strike kills teams. So just firing off that Dragon Strike arrow just costs you that little bit more. Uh, it just costs you that little bit. Let's bring chat in. Chat, if you want to ask some questions, if you have questions that you had throughout the thing, uh, at, ESL1, uh, at ESL1 amongst many, uh, ask away. Let's, let's get some questions out there. Otherwise, I think Sonic Arrows as well, just a little bit more careful with making sure that they land. It's, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here with Miss, but just for everyone else. Um, it's a really powerful tool, right? It's such a powerful tool. It lets you lead the target a little bit, lets you prepare the shot. And when Hanzo has a little bit of space, he suddenly can kill everything and absolutely dominate. Do you think uh, Miss should have stayed on Hanzo or, or did the soldier Genji was better? I think in that situation... He might have actually been better served staying on the Hanzo because you already had a soldier, I think, at that point. And I think just keeping the soldier would have been fine with the Hanzo. Um, just because Miss Hanzo is good enough to carry that. Miss has a very, very, very good Hanzo. Was dealing with a lot of damage, was putting out a lot of pressure and syncing up nicely with the Zarya. Um, I think with the soldier, instead of the Roadhog, you had enough pressure on the Farah to make sure that Farah couldn't do enough, and then you could have just stabilized. The problem with that um, round where everything went wrong wasn't necessarily the picks, it was the plays, where stuff like Reinhardt and Lucio moved forward instead of falling back at the right time, people panicking about a Diva ultimate, um, people just playing badly around certain situations, and that was causing the big issues. Uh, what flavor of ice cream is Hanzo? Hmm. Hmm. That's, that's very difficult. I, mean, I tend to say like something alcoholic and mature, like a you know like a rum raisin ice cream or something, because he's a mature refined figure that's a little bit dangerous as well. He's a little bit spicy and dangerous, so like rum raisin ice cream. 
is also quite high class. Uh, when dealing with a team where you're the only healer, which one would generally provide the best heals for the team? Anna, if you're good enough. Mercy, if you're not. Um, that's that's not a hands based question, but it'll, I'll answer anyway because it's a pretty simple one. Anna, if you are good enough because you provide the most healing per second. And then Mercy, if you aren't that confident. Uh, if you shoot a Sonar Arrow into a Reinar Barrier and the Rhine drops it, does the Sonar reset? I don't think it does. I think it just drops... Like, I think the arrow actually does physically just drop and land wherever Reinhardt drops his barrier. If Reinhardt keeps his barrier up, then it follows Reinhardt around. It's great. Uh, is it worth saying Blizzard for, uh, for a few minutes just for overtime? I'd say no. If you could just, if you're in a, like, being cautious with it is fine, but if you're in a situation where, like, the enemy team is all packed into a choke point like they were before um, in, the, in this round over here, like, using... The May using the Blizzard in this situation, I am more than fine with. Because the enemy team is all in like a big choke point. It might not be this exact situation, but you get the idea that when the enemy team is all bunched up like this, Blizzard will usually get one or two people and win your fight pretty much just off the back of that, which is really goddamn nice. Uh, do you like the tank meta and how do you think you can fix it? I don't like the tank meta at all. I think it's very, very frustrating and I think the game is better when you have more DPS options rather than just playing big tanky targets. It also makes feeling deal it makes uh, the feeling of dealing damage feel very, very unsatisfying because it's very hard to get kills and then you just know that you're feeding the enemy team ultimates, giving them an advantage, so on, so on, so on. How do you fix it? No fan is healing. How should I use dragon? When the enemy team is engaging... If they're coming through a choke, putting the dragon in the choke just gets tons of kills. If they're all in a tight corridor, it speaks for itself, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have a Zarya, always be cognizant of, you know, how long is it until Zarya has her ultimate, because dragon, uh, you know, dragon ton surge, or dragon surge, or graviton strike, or whatever the hell you want to call it, is one of the most powerful wombo combos in the game. It's nearly impossible to defend against, and even if you do defend against it using something like a sound barrier, it's still very, very hard to stay alive because you just strip off the sound barrier using that combo, and then someone else like a Reinhardt just walks in and kills everything. It feels good, man. Uh, why is Hanzo so hated, and how do you get your team to accept him? Uh, I think someone pointed out during this that Mist had a, an accuracy rate of about 40%. Now, let's be fair, he's shooting against tanks, but he's also trying to shoot like a Farah and an Anna and a Lucio, which are all very hard to hit. 40% accuracy is pretty goddamn good. Hanzo is hated because a Hanzo, your average Hanzo, has an accuracy of about 15 to 20%. And so he isn't hitting arrows. The arrows that he's hitting feel more random. And it's very easy to sort of have no value on Hanzo. It's also very easy to just get jumped and mobbed onto Hanzo, panic, and then die. Um, you'll often hear people say to Mist, and I heard this happen countless times to Mist, is people saying, swap off, they have a Winston. And Mist says, Winston's not really a problem. A good enough Hanzo can deal with a Winston in his face relatively well, because you just land a single headshot and then a scatter arrow, and then you kill him. Like, he's dead. That's how you deal with Winston. Um, you just got to be good enough to not panic and be able to deal with that and hope that the Winston doesn't position himself well enough the way he can survive that. Is Hanzo viable against triple tank? I actually think he's okay in triple tank. I think Hanzo is actually perfectly fine in triple tank. He does burst damage that can help you finish off a tank very quickly. He has a very powerful ultimate combo that can kill tanks. And he has uh, just a lot of burst damage potential, even without scatter arrow. It's very easy to land headshots on lots of the tanks, so it's a very good way of finishing off. Do you think other DPS do Hanzo's job better? Not really. I'd say in a DPS meta, Widowmaker does Hanzo's job better, um, just because Widowmaker does more reliable bursts, but it's smaller amounts of bursts and less frequent. Does that make sense? Like, Widowmaker is like, bang, dead, bang, dead, bang, dead, against DPS targets. Hanzo is like, bang, bang, dead, bang, bang, dead, bang, bang, dead. And because he can do that and that damage output is higher, then he's better than Widowmaker. Other DPS options can't quite deal the same amount of bursts. Like, if you think about Soldier 76, he deals granular damage, like 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 125 with the rocket slamming in. Uh, I think Farah is actually a very close parallel to Hanzo, and I think they do very similar things. This is why you see, and I know I'm reaching out to like the Valkyrs in the chat, but part of the reason why Valkyr is so successful on the Farah is that Farah can deal a huge amount of damage, um, and tanks, even though they can soak it up and Anna can heal up, can't quite deal with that much damage coming in. Hanzo has very, very similar output, um, and can do quite a lot with that. He also just has a very powerful ultimate combo. I'd say Hanzo is actually a perfectly fine pick. He's just very, very, very skill dependent. Rodog nerf, how and when? Um, wait for the Anna nerf first and then figure it out. Otherwise, I'd like to see the cooldown increased on the hook. What do you think of Fire in the current meta? I think she's actually pretty good in the current meta, as seen by Valk's success. Uh, at Ohm, why Genji? And at Mist, why Hanzo? Mist can answer that question in his own time. For me, why Genji? He's just a very fun hero and I like him. I'm actually going to talk about that um, account, though, after we're done with this. 
And I've kind of already answered this, Skyfinder. Uh, but basically, yes. Yes, he is. If you shoot Sun and Arrow into a run, yeah, we've answered this. What else do we have? Do we have any other questions coming into chat while I scroll down? Any changes you would like to see for Hanzo? Um... I mean, the, the thing that springs to mind is like hitboxes, but honestly, I don't have that big of an issue with Hanzo's hitboxes. I, I know it feels unfair, but it's it works in the game, kind of. Like, I think Hanzo's fine at the moment. I mean, I, I, again, I'd like to see Blizzard try and solve the, the biggest issue and then see how everything balances out rather than trying to tweak absolutely everything at once because that's how you end up with a situation like how Anna is now, um, basically. In situations like the last point where your teammates refuse to play needed heroes, should you switch out of your comfort zone to benefit the team? You switch to tank in this case. In this case, what happened is no one took charge. Nobody took charge of the team. Everyone was just swapping to like desperation picks. Like we suddenly had a May out of fucking nowhere that no one seemed to realize, oh god, we got a May. And then we had this initial push where we didn't where the team didn't use the May. So I'm gonna go back to the start of this round. Because this is just like the most shocking thing to see, right? This this should not happen. Alright, everyone's running out. Oh wait, no, this actually I need to go even earlier back. This is a long round, lads. Lads and ladies. Actually, I have a lot of female viewers, a surprising number. Always worries me. Uh, even further back, Jesus. Okay. At this point, we should have had a plan. Like, we should have had someone on voice saying, Hey guys, what we should do is move on to the point and then try and cut them in half with the May wall as they try and come in and then get some quick kills. Instead, no one knows what the fuck's going on. This guy's still switching right towards the last couple of seconds. Sword 76 is running out into the middle of the open, has no protection. May's blocking off this for some reason, then not fighting over here. We have no tanks in front of us, it's just the supports over here. We've got tanks running towards the point, everyone's going absolutely everywhere. No wonder we lost this fight, the enemy team just stuck together as a six and engaged. And won the fight, like that, that's all they needed to do. There was, there was nothing to defeat there. And honestly, this match, more than anything, just showed the need of uh, good voice communications and just someone being willing to say, okay, this is the plan. And even though everyone probably, like, uh, the amount of times I've been on Nepal, for example, and, you know, uh, Nepal Village, where, you know, you've got that high ground area that everyone runs to first, right? And everyone at relatively high level kind of knows that the plan is, if you have a Lucio, you go and take the high ground first. Doesn't hurt to still say, yeah, guys, we're going to go left. We're going to go left to the high ground. And if someone says, I know, it's just, yeah, just being sure. And it's just like, okay. It just means that no one's running off to a different direction and then losing you the fight instantly because not everyone was on exactly the same page. Um, just in general, like in a general case, rather than on this match, when your teammates refuse to play the needed hero, should you switch out of your comfort zone to benefit the team? If you think you can contribute more on that specific hero you are playing, then play that hero if you are aiming to win. Um, unless it's a situation like where you have no healers, then if you're willing to bite the bullet, then bite the bullet and play the healer. Um, and that hurts, and it's, it's not fun for that person usually because they want to be doing something else, but if you really want to win, then that's what you're going to have to do and try and urge someone to pick a second healer. But in this instance, like, the hands of pick, I think, was perfectly fine to stick with for a while. Uh, what, maps are, what maps is Hanzo most useful on? Is he better on attack or defense? That's actually a very, very good question. It's a very good question. Um, maps specifically is a hard one to run through because there's a lot of maps in Overwatch. I'd say he's very good on any map where the enemy team has to move through a tight choke point and usually move through a tight choke point from cover, which is a lot of maps. Because what that lets you do is it lets, uh, lets you set up with uh, Sonar Arrow and you can see them coming in. And when you can see them coming in, you're prepared for them. You can already set up your shots. You are basically... You know, if you think about the value of Infrasight and seeing, like, all six of the enemy team, if all six of the enemy team have to move through a choke point, then one Sonic Arrow gets the same value as Widowmaker's entire ultimate. And any instance where you can set that up, Hanzo is going to be a good pick. Also, just any map that's very closed and tight, because then Sonic, uh, Scatter Arrow becomes more powerful, we have more things to bounce it off of and use it off of. Hanamura is honestly pretty good for Hanzo, fittingly. Li Jiang isn't bad for Hanzo. I'd say this map is very good for Hanzo. Control Center is very good for Hanzo. I'd say the open garden map is very bad for Hanzo just because it's so open. Um, and there's so many different ways you can kind of go. He does have a couple of good spots in there, but it's not as all purpose. I'd say um, first point Hollywood, he's pretty good. First point King's Row, he's also very good. And attack or defense. It's honestly hard to say. Like he's He works kind of well on both. I would say he's better on attack than defense. And I say that just because... 
Hanzo is a character where if like Diva just runs at you, you are in a bit of trouble, especially if she manages to defense matrix the scatter arrow, which Diva should be looking to do, right? If Diva defense matrix is your scatter arrow, you've just lost and she can just kill you for free and that's it. And then she can go and find health. Um, so on defense, she runs the danger of just being a bit overrun, while on offense, you have a little bit more time to set yourself up. It's less likely that the defense is going to jump you in the back line, so you have more space where you can just li like land your shots, prepare your arrows, and get the kills. Does Nano Boost, uh, does Nano Boost work with Hanzo Alt? And does the damage boost stop when it ends? Uh, yes. I believe it should work. Um, so when you have the Nano Boost on you, now, the way the damage boosts work is that they increase any damage dealt at that point. So, for example, at least this is the way that I think it works. I haven't tried this myself, but I imagine if it works on the same logic, it should work like this. Where if Junkrat, if you damage boost a Junkrat, it doesn't matter when he fires the grenade, it matters when the grenade explodes. That's when the damage boost is applied. Um, so, I imagine the same logic works for Hanzo, where every tick of the Dragon Strike, if you have a damage amp of some form, whether it's Mercy or Nano Boost, then that's when the nano boost is going to be applied. Is it worth using it on Hanzo? No. Because the Dragon Strike, if anyone's caught in it for long enough, will probably kill them anyway. So you don't need the nano boost. You need it on something else that just needs that little bit of extra damage to become that much more lethal, like a Reinhardt, like a Genji ultimate. Soul 76 ultimate, for example, can kill that much faster, tear down an entire enemy team. There's just better targets for it, usually. Uh, we've already answered the ice cream question. I say rum raisin. I think chat said pistachio, which is also a good option. Hands up or Genji butt? Uh, Genji butt and hands are left nipple. Any advice for playing around an uncooperative Hanzo? Um, just be ready to capitalize on any arrows he hits. Use Sonic Arrow as much as you can. Try and make sure that Hanzo has space um, to deal damage. And, you know, he isn't getting mobbed down. If he is getting mobbed down, then just go help him. Because the second that Hanzo is free to shoot and aim, he can deal a huge amount of damage. Favorite Hanzo skin? Uh, I like the yellow one. I think it's Dragon uh, is the yellow one. I really like that one. I think that's a really cool one. Uh, let's see. The problem with Anna healing seems to be, have been all around for a season three. Do you think Blizzard is too slow? Yes. Yes, I do. I think Anna has needed tweaks for a long time. Uh, when should you switch off Hanzo? When the enemy team is playing a very aggressive dive comp, I'd say is a very good time just because you don't get space. And yeah, I think that's pretty a good time. And also, just like if you aren't hitting anything and nothing's dying, then just swap off Hanzo. Like, if you are having a bad game, be prepared to swap off. And that's true for any sniper. Um, you will have games, like I used to play sniper a lot in Team Fortress 2, for example. And I always made it a rule of thumb. If, if I'm not hitting anything, why am I trying to force it? Why am I dragging my team down? If I'm not hitting anything, I'm not hitting anything. Fine, I'll go play something else. Same is true for Hanzo. If you aren't getting kills, you aren't getting eliminations, you aren't doing any damage, swap off him. That, like, you're being a nothing if you aren't killing stuff, so you don't want to be him. Uh, women viewer, viewers worry you. Uh, women in general intimidate me. There we go. Uh, is there any way to make people want to talk in a comp game? Yeah, talk yourself. Uh, when you start the game, just say, hey guys. Like, you don't have to say anything more than that. That's, that's all you have to say, and you'll be surprised. And then just keep, um, just keep, you know, you don't have to be best friends. Just make short callouts. Oh, Reinhardt, Barrier Low. Reaper, no Wraith. Tracer, no Recall. Aura coming in behind. And just small calls and give a little bit of a direction, give a little bit of a location if you can. Uh, not everyone knows what the callouts are. Most people don't know what the callouts are. I don't even know what all the callouts are. But just, you know, little bits of, of information here and there. And you'll be surprised how many people start talking. Why do you hate Anna so much? I thought you really liked her. I do, I do, I do. I just think she's overpowered. Um, part of why I like her. I, I love playing Anna. She's just the entire reason why we have tank meta. So she just needs nothing and tank meta might vanish. You think 400 health on Sim Teleporter Shield Gen is too much? Yes. Do you think two CP maps are dumb? Yes, I do. Nano burst doesn't work against Dragon Strike. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, is Hanzo good against the Boostio meta? No, because you're gonna have a hard time hitting Lucio. What combos do you recommend using? Uh, Earth Shatter, Graviton Surge, both very very good ones. Um, trying to think of just anything else, like anything that just keeps the enemy team in sp in location where you have to clean them up very quickly. But don't use it with a Blizzard, for example, because you don't need it. What are you going to do when your team goes 5 DPS? Cry? Um, pray. I think that's about it for today, though. That's all the questions that are going to be on in the video. Um, I'll answer Ricochet's question after the video, I think. Uh, so, yeah, this is for YouTube. Uh, thank you, guys. Twitch chat, say bye to YouTube. Thank you guys so much. If you want to send in stuff to Coaching the Many, uh, I'll put it in the chat as well. Let's put that in there. So, if you want to get your footage reviewed on Coaching the Many, send it to 
oamreviews at gmail.com. Send it there with the hero name in the title, the rank, and then put the uh, YouTube video, for example, in the description with a little... Uh, description of what the game is, maybe some of the issues you had perhaps, and then you might get it reviewed on here. If you are a Twitch subscriber, make sure you put that in the title as well, um, because they get a little bit of priority, for example. Missed, for example, long-time friend of the stream, that's part of why he got today. Beautiful guys, you've been wonderful Twitch chat. Uh, oh god, I forgot. All caps got spammed out, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've configured Nightbot.